What's going on YouTube's Reason Alex back once again and we're doing my immersive video games part two video. This actually might be a two part video, part two and three, because it's on the N64 this time. And there are so many titles on the N64. As y'all know, the Nintendo 64 is my favorite system of all time and in my opinion the greatest console ever constructed by human hands. Because of that, it is my largest game collection, topping out at about 75, 76 games, if I'm not mistaken, haven't counted it recently. But uh, because of that, there's so many titles that I feel deserve a nod of uh, acknowledgement in that category of just super immersive. The type of game that draws you into the world that it's portraying on the screen, that draws you in and has you, at least mentally, while you're playing it in a state of bliss because you feel like you are a part of that world. The, the game designers did that good of a job. There's so many titles like that. As you saw in my first video on this, uh, we went through the Nintendo Wii and the games that I felt on that console did that uh, job uh, with excellency. And now we're heading to the N64. So I got, uh, man, I'm not even gonna count, there's a bunch of games here, so I'm just gonna jump into them, give you a little insight into each one and I'll tell you what I think is so immersive and so amazing about these games. First off, in no particular order, we have Banjo-Kazooie, okay? Now, before I continue, I just want to let you know that if the game that I'm showing you has sequels, I may actually possess or own the sequel, but I'm not going to have it up here along with the game and the sequels because I'll, I'll run out of space here, but I will mention them. Uh, Banjo-Kazooie is one of those games. Banjo-Kazooie and the sequel Banjo-Tooie, which I do own, both very, very immersive very beautifully designed, lush, colorful, vibrant, three-dimensional worlds that when you're playing the game, just take you away. Uh, you're no longer sitting in your living room. You're on, you're in uh, Gruntilda's Lair. You're in uh, Treasure Trove Cove. You're in Clanker's Cavern. You're in Bubble Gloop Swamp and all these wonderful, imaginative worlds that the game designers at Rare and, uh, and Nintendo were able to collaborate and make. Uh, like I said, the, the graphics are three-dimensional, beautifully done, beautifully animated. One of those 3D platform action adventures in the vein of a Mario 64, but on steroids, as I've said before. This game is Mario 64 on steroids. Everything Mario 64 was and more. Uh, and it's such a good range, a diverse range of uh, areas and worlds that you get to explore, which is an also a, a big trick for me as far as immersion goes. Uh, immersiveness uh, you have swamps you have deserts you have beaches you have jungles you have uh, caves you have uh, industrial sites you have so many different snow wastelands you have so many different variety of worlds to visit in this game and they're all beautifully done and beautifully rendered man so banjo kazooie and banjo tooie both of them definitely fit that bill next castlevania 64 this is one of the most atmospheric games i've ever played especially for the generation of the time that it came out in on the you know, 64 slash 32 bit war in that time. Uh, Castlevania 64 is just epic, man, as far as the landscape, the, the design of the world. Uh, you know, from the very beginning of the game, from the very opening of the game, uh, when you're out, in this, uh, you're out in this field and it's very smoggy and misty and it's dark and it's just got that Transylvania, you know, vampires running in the shadows, loose type of feeling and it just immerses you right into that with the music and the look and the effects, everything that they do, the way that they design the world. And this was the first time we had ever seen Castlevania in 3D. And as we know, the N64 took so many of our deep, close to heart classics that we loved in 2D on the Super Nintendo and, and, and on, the, on the regular Nintendo, original Nintendo, and bumped them up into the three-dimensional world gracefully. And this is one of those examples. Just amazing, amazingly immersive, beautiful world to look at and play through. Next, Diddy Kong Racing. Now this game, as I've described to others uh, who've asked me about it, is not just a racing game, it's more of a, like a racing adventure. It is purely racing, but there is an adventure element to it, there is an, a, an overworld that you explore. Um, and it's just not just the overworld that makes it immersive for me, it's the track design, the multiplayer, the different levels. Uh, the, the tracks are designed so well, and, 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 and combining that with the adventure mode of the overworld that takes you into the races and is your overworld to access the different tracks and the different cups, uh, Putting that whole thing together to me really drew me in and I was really on this island with Diddy Kong uh, and on all the characters trying to win the races and get to beat Wizpig, which was awesome. So very well done. Next, we got Donkey Kong 64. You know I got the banana color cart. You got to do it. You know what I'm saying? This is an epic 3D action platform adventure. And the, again, it's Nintendo and it's rare. When those two teamed up, especially in that time back in the day, it was instant gold. And this game was no different. The worlds were designed so beautifully. The trees, the foliage in the background, the, 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 just the design of it, the way it was artistically 
uh, envisioned and put onto your screen really made you feel like you were on, on DK's island. And, uh, and you walk swinging from tree to tree on the vines and climbing up mountains and, and you know, uh, tagging in all the different Kong uh, family members that you can play in, in this game. And it's the worlds were just so 3D. It was the first time we had ever seen Donkey Kong in a three-dimensional, 360 degrees of control. And it was just epic, man. You really felt like you were there. They did a very good job of drawing you in into the virtual world that they were creating for you. Uh, next, we got... F-Zero X, another racing game. This is a Nintendo uh, original franchise. Uh, and uh, this is the first one in 3D, of course, like the N64 was, like I said, the beginning of 3D. And this was just amazing. The track design, the soundtrack mixed with the track design and the blazing speed and the loops and corkscrews and just anti-gravity, super speed racing, uh, the colors. And, and, and just the, what, what the Nintendo 64 was able to do on a cartridge with the speed that it was able to do it in this game it really sucked you in into that feeling of speed like you were going thousands of miles an hour going through a corkscrew coming out of a loop to loop and you know taking a jump over a, a bridge it, it was just amazingly done and it really drew you in man so that's that's why this game gets a nod of acknowledgement from me in that arena next we got best first person shooter of all time goldeneye 007 this game is so epic and there's nothing more that needs to be said about it that hasn't already been said but in the topic of immersiveness of being able to immerse you into the world draw you into the world make you feel like you're really there this is one of those rare first person shooters that actually does it and it didn't just rely on its great graphics for the time it relied on the music the soundtrack uh the the, the controls the way the game controlled how smooth it was uh, the layout of the levels, the design, the faithfulness to the film that it was based on, but bringing that into a three-dimensional interactive world. Uh, so very well done. Everything from the bunkers to, you know, the, the, the labs where you see the scientists and they got their hands up and they don't want you to shoot them. And, you know, if you were to shoot them in the hand, they react by holding their hand. If you shoot them in the knee, they grab their knee. Back then, this was so revolutionary. It really drew you in to that world, man. It was amazing. Next, Jet Force Gemini, third-person action-adventure shooter on a distant planet, trying to stop an alien invasion. Uh, the real thing about this game that immerses you is just the graphics. It's 3D, the controls, they really bring you in, the colors, the way they designed this for an alien world. It was just beautiful to look at, and as you played, the story was great, and it's another rare Nintendo classic, so it was very easy to get drawn in. Next, Legend of Zelda Mahora's Mask. Now, I don't own the actual cartridge for Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, but suffice it to say, I'm including that even over this one even though this was great, in that feeling of immersiveness. Because there was nothing to me like that first day that you unboxed your Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time cart, popped it in, and for the first time ran across Hyrule Field, watching the sun rise and set, watching the day and night cycles go by, and, and just the expanse of 3D worlds you had to explore in Hyrule Field alone, and the fact that it would go from day to night, and the different things would happen in the day than they would at night, and the different environments like Death Mountain, when you're climbing up Death Mountain, just, it was such an immersive experience that you felt like you were, for the first time ever, truly in the land of Hyrule yourself, so it was amazing. Both of these games do that. Next, we got... Star Wars Rogue Squadron and Star Wars Battle for Naboo. I brought these both up here because I feel they're sequels, but they're kind of different. So, but they use the exact same graphics engine, and it's a it's it's a, a combat simulator, so to speak, in the Star Wars universe, where you jump into the different vehicles and and, and uh, ships of the Star Wars uh, franchise and go through some of the most iconic uh, missions and battles in the, in the in the saga of Star Wars. And it's just the music is all there. The original legitimate soundtrack is there. The, the design of the worlds, the fact that you can go so high up and so low down and, and you know, most Eisley and uh, Beggar's Canyon and Hoth and everything is there and it's just done so faithfully, makes you feel like you're really piloting, especially in cockpit mode. When you go to the cockpit, it makes you feel like you're in the X-Wing, man. So both these games get that nod for me. I'm out of time for this. This is part one of the immersive, uh, well, actually, this is really part two, going on part three coming up next. I hope you guys tune in. I got a lot more N64 games to talk about and uh, to give uh, that nod of acknowledgement for being an immersive masterpiece. God bless y'all. Hope you tune in.